Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. And on today's video, we're doing a very, very highly requested video from you guys. And that is on Lechusa Pond. So all you houseplant people have been asking about this. However, you gardening folk also may want to lend me your ear for a period of time because you may see some benefits to this product as well. So you guys requested this because I do have an entire series on soil amendments and the science behind soil amendments or just soil products in general. And so this was asked on my LECA video I did, very, very common uh, requested video over there. So we're gonna just um, dive deep into this. I will give you a forewarning. I'm going to debunk some of their claims. Um, so if you are super loyal to Latrusa Pond, click off now, this may upset you. However, if you have a scientific mind and you kind of wanna see both sides of the story, then voila, you are in the right place. But first, if you enjoy the videos that I do based on your guys' requests, be sure to let me know in the comments down below what your next request for a video is, where you're from, because it helps me make videos just a bit better suited towards you guys. And as always, hit that like button, tap the subscribe and share. Some of you share my videos like crazy. And one of my top ways for getting traffic to the channel is through your sharing on Facebook groups, Instagram, that sort of thing, which is wild to me. That's wild. So let's just jump right into Lechusa Pond. Lechusa Pond is a name brand. Uh, it's not sacred in any way. You can make Lechusa Pond, but I fully believe this is possible because it's very easy to do. And we'll go over that a little bit more towards the end of the video. So Lechusa Pond, I went onto their website and I just literally copied their entire main claim and I posted it into a Word document and then I took notes of every single claim. So we're gonna go through literally every single claim that they make because I don't have this stuff, but I don't really need this stuff in order to analyze it whatsoever. Um, so it is the perfect alternative when conventional soil cannot and should not be used. It is, it is a great alternative. It is a great alternative to LECA as well. Uh, so it's perfect for all plants, orchids, and even citrus plants, house plants, and vegetables. Yes, I agree with that as well. Very, very good for that. Very, very good for any of you overwatering folk out there. Very good solution. Uh, the only plants I would not use this with is carnivores. So uh, carnivorous plants do not like nutrients and Latrice Pond does coat their product in a slow release uh, fertilizer. So I would probably steer away from it if you're doing any sort of uh, carnivorous plant in any capacity. Not so good for that. Uh, it's, it has the ideal air to water ratio, 45% uh, water to 55% air. I'm not gonna argue that. I would say that's pretty reasonable uh, thought there. It also reduces plants' vulnerability to disease. Uh, that's a little bit bold. It's probably not gonna reduce anything that is not soil borne. So it's not gonna reduce anything that's airborne. And, but it will reduce anything that is soil borne. So that could be fungus gnats, thrips, mealybugs, you know, powdery mildew, rust, anything that is harbored in the soil will be eliminated through the juice upon because it is a relatively sterile product and it will be sterile for many, many moons. Uh, it will not reduce bacterial rot that is caused by anaerobic situations, AKA root rot. It will not uh, fully get rid of that. If you are leaving water in Latrusa Pond for extended periods of time, and our bacteria is gonna come in, it's going to cause root rot, especially if you ye leave uh, soil on your plant's roots, if you have a lot of dead root biomass, or if you're using an organic fertilizer that has quite a bit of organic material in there that's going to be decomposed, don't do it, don't use organic fertilizer with this stuff, it will end in bloodshed. So no, 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 do not do that. Uh, anaerobic bacteria will still hang out in this and it's gonna hang out in anything. It's gonna hang out in LECA, it's gonna hang out in soil, it's gonna hang out in Latrusa Pond. You have no control over it. It doesn't make you a bad plant parrot, it's just the reality of microbes. Even after years, the structural stability of the plant's temp straight does not condense and it keeps its air permeable structure. That is 100% correct. It is big rocks smashed into little rocks. It's quite literally that simple. And so yes, it, it will not 
degrade in structure. The only way it would degrade in structure would be if you had it in a hydroponic system and you were constantly blasting it with a flow of water. And even then it would take a very, very long time for it to degrade. So it needs literal mechanical manipulation in order to degrade and disappear. So uh, Lachute's Pond has multiple sieving's to minimize the amount of particulate size in the substrate. This prevents the increase of silt in the root area and sustains long lasting capillary action. So what they're talking about here is they have uh, a, a sieving system. So you get larger size aggregates and you don't get all the powdery fine stuff. And so the reason why they do this is because that powdery fine stuff, while it increases porosity and it increases nutrient holding capability, it also decreases air permeability and therefore can result in root rot, which is not ideal. We want a very aerobic or as aerobic as possible environment. And so uh, this tiny silt can cause issues. And this is where if you're making Latrice Pond at home, which we'll go over a little bit later, you want to make sure you're rinsing it very well. When you get your Latrice Pond at home, you want to make sure you're rinsing it very well. And you want to get rid of all that fine dust that can be hanging out in the uh, little capillaries of the small rocks. And so you want to blast it, like blast it with uh, the kitchen sink with the little the high power one and just blast all that stuff out of those little tiny nooks and crannies located in the soil system we have zeolite it is a product um, it is it is a inorganic product that helps to buffer soil p or the ph of both soil and obviously of lechusa pond in this case and so it does allow for the nutrient uh, to be more bioavailable to the plant because it holds our pH at the very ideal pH for our plants, which would be, uh, you know, we're just gonna refer to that right there, which is our soil pH and our uh, nutrient bioavailability chart. And so yes, uh, zeolite does do this and I should do an entire video on zeolite. I have not done it yet, I need to do it. But uh, yeah, very, very cool stuff. And so it would work in that sense and that is very, very good and ideal compared to something like a peat-based potting soil. Peat-based potting soil, coconut coir-based potting soil are very, very low in pH, sometimes out of the range of nutrient availability, which is less than ideal. However, Latrice Pond helps to regulate that. And so this is why you could, if you wanted to actually mix Latrice Pond in with your potting soil to help give you that pH buffer and also to give you that uh, very valuable air permeability into the soil profile and i would recommend this similar to like i would recommend a pumice or a perlite this is going to last much much longer well it's going to last the same amount of time as a, a pumice wool which would be years literal years so the capillary action helps to drop water into the planter and allow for even growth and small rooted plants to get the perfect amount of water so yes it does it has capillary action it has anti-gravitational forces and because it is so nice and tiny it works much better than LECA does and it will allow for very even root growth and very even plant growth and just overall a very happy plant so it's very it is made uh, main component is lava rock and pumice and I did a video on pumice and we talked about that really high cation exchange capacity that capillary action that really holds on to nutrients and it's like a little battery and that little battery will release um, nutrients as the exudates from the roots are released. So yes, very, very valid claim there. Consistent root um, sor or source of nutrients for those roots, very, very nice. Uh, so it acts like a buffer and ex this is where it gets a little bit crazy. So it acts as a buffer and absorbs excess fertilizer and gives it to the plant when needed. It is a natural nutrient storage that prevents burning of the roots through over fertilization. you're still gonna burn your plants. That uh, claim is bold. And the reason why it's bold is because chitin exchange capacity, Latrice upon would be negatively charged. So it's gonna be like a clay soil with lots more porosity and air spacing in it. So it has a high cation exchange capacity, has a negative charge to it. Sodium is what causes the burn on a plant. That's what causes the yellow on a plant. And so a uh, sodium ion is 
positively charged. It is a cation. And so when it comes in contact with Le Chusapon, it is going to be sucked up into Le Chusapon and it's just gonna hang out there. And it's definitely gonna be a part of the battery, but it can still cause issues with your plants. And a sodium molecule is so very, very large, it's going to actually occupy more sites onto the Lachusapon, reducing the nutrient holding capacity of Lachusapon while also, uh, you know, not binding as strongly to Lachusapon, meaning it will be more bioavailable to your plant over time and will burn your plant. So over fertilization, I'm sorry, is still very much so possible. Uh, it is not a buffer bulk weight firm support yes it is uh, going to hold on to your plant roots much better than a leca wood which makes it very superior uh order absorber i mean maybe possibly don't really care if it's anaerobic if you have dead root matter if you have dead organic material it's gonna stink it doesn't matter latrice upon is not gonna save you from that uh, and you kind of want that smell because it's gonna help you determine if your plant's healthy or sick so this one's my favorite. Uh, heavy metals and pollutants from the water are permanently linked to Lachusa Pond. So again, they're really trying to drive home this cation exchange capacity, this capillary action that's happening, and the fact that it's a little battery. Now, the issue with any product that claims to do this is that Lachusa Pond is not a sentient being, meaning it does not have a wall or a little sign out front that says, uh, mercury, if you come in here, um, you will be held in suspension and you will never be released. It's, it's not possible. It works off chemistry, you guys, and it works off pH. And so, yes, things will be absorbed, but so long as the pH is in the range for those to be emitted or released from Latrusa Pond, they will be released. And there's not much we can do about that. So, a very unbiased product. It is an inorganic, very chemistry physics type driven product and so uh, while it will attract heavy pollutants it's not like it's not going to release it so long as the ph is in the ideal range bye bye copper and everything else that is toxic in some level it's going into the water system and it's potentially going to go into the plants which is why with latrusa pond you want to rinse it the similar way you would to leca on a semi-regular basis just want to give it a thorough rinse um water tap water has a ph that will wash away and release a lot of those toxic heavy pollutants sodium from the profile if you over fertilize just rinse 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 like the flood waters of noah and uh release it all from the system and then just start from scratch very important regardless of what you're using sound bias sorry uh mineral plants uh plant substrate blocks fungi and can attack the roots probably not so um here they're saying that there's no fungi that can attack their roots so fungi happens when stuff that's large so roots leaves sticks twigs bark is in the process of being decomposed is like the first step on the way to decomposition and so uh if you have dead roots in your latrice pond and you will have fungi uh, it's not that sterile uh, maybe it's that sterile to begin with but over time if you're not rinsing it won't be sterile forever so I mean, like, yeah, it will prevent or it won't have any fungi to begin with, but as the plant gets older and degrades in there, and if you don't repot it or you don't flush it, uh, you're gonna still have, you're, you'll have stuff in there. Okay, so planting the trees upon, you do not need to completely free the root ball from the soil. That I don't agree with. You're gonna wanna free your, your plant from the soil. Uh, as much as you possibly can. Now, the reason for this is because if you don't, you can cause an anaerobic environment, meaning 
you uh, you can end up with root rot because root rot bacteria is caused in anaerobic environments. So try to get as much off as possible. So the components of Lachusa Pond is zeolite, German wash pumice, German light lava, and a fully coated premium quality fertilizer. So all these, again, are big rocks broken into little rocks. And so there's nothing particularly special about any of this. You can make your own Latrusa Pond at home out of pumice, straight pumice if you wanted to. Um, the lava will have some minute levels of micronutrients. Those micronutrients, you know, it's gonna be really tough for it to be released into the system if it's not mechanically broken down. So while they say it is a permanent supply of iron for the plant, it is pretty tightly bound in situ. So uh, it's gonna have to break down over time. Now, not saying that the roots mechanically can't break it down or that the exudates, the acids released from the plant roots won't begin to break down that lava rock over time. Uh, and so it will have some effect on your micronutrient. It's not gonna be revolutionary or anything like that. And then zeolite, which is your pH buffer. So like I said, you can use any kind of pumice. It doesn't have to be German washed and it, uh, it can be German light la lava, just lava rock in general will work fine. And then zeolite, um, you can also use cinderite. Cinderite will work as well, uh, very similar to the zeolite product. So you wanna go for smaller, so you can get different sizes in all these products. You go with the bigger stuff, it's going to be probably better if you refer to the LECA video for that because the water level in the container is gonna to have to be much higher when you start getting into those bigger balls. Um, and then if you go with the smaller pumice, the smaller zeolite, like the little mini, like the La Chusa Pond size, um, you don't need as much water because you have a little bit more anti-gravity, a little bit more capillary action happening. So you can keep that water level a little bit lower, which will ultimately reduce the potential for an anaerobic environment and root rot in general. So uh, definitely something to think about there, but you can make this at home. Just make sure you rinse it and rinse out all the silt and the tiny little particulates in there uh, it's so that you don't end up with any anaerobic environments whatsoever. And then the fully coated premium quality fertilizer, they say it only works for six months, which is probably pretty accurate. It's probably an inorganic version of fertilizer, which is totally normal to use um, in a lot of scenarios with houseplants because we try to keep our houseplants as sterile as possible for whatever reason. Um, you need microbes in order to degrade your organic fertilizers and turn them into bioavailable, usable forms for your plants. So if you don't have microbial activity, for example, let's just look at one system, such as the nitrogen cycle, you need nitrifying, denitrifying bacteria, at least in order to allow for the nitrogen cycle to take place in your soil. So if you're using organic fertilizers, Latrusa Pond is not for you, so long as Latrusa Pond is used just on its own. If you wanna use Latrusa Pond in a soil profile or within a peat moss or a coconut based uh, system, go right ahead and then you can use your organic fertilizer because you will have the organic, uh, product the carbon mass available to allow for microbial activity to take place i would not use organic at all in a latrusa pond setup that is just latrusa pond because you will end up with an anaerobic uh, pretty darn toxic environment uh, if it's not able to be degraded quick enough so if you don't have an aerator or something in there that's going to end poorly for you so try to stay away from that i would use only inorganic fertilizer and i would use the half dose uh, depending on how active your plant is at growing a half dose or a quarter dose is kind of more sufficient and I would micro dose typically with that. Um, you can use a granular fertilizer but I would most definitely do a quarter dose if you're using granular. If you're using liquid like I said I would micro dose with fertilizer uh, every time I watered or every time I added water to the system. Regardless you're using inorganic fertilizer you need to flush that Latrusa pond uh, of the excess salt that can build up because sodium is a very big molecule compared to many other molecules on our periodic table. And so when it makes connection with a Latrusa pond receptor, it will take up and it will occupy quite a bit of space in that profile. And it does the same thing in soil, for example. So that's not a Latrusa pond or a soil issue. 
that is just a sodium issue in general so uh, I want to thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this be sure to give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments down below if you use Latrice Pond or if you're going to try to use Latrice Pond in a soil system I think it's a great replacement to perlite um, and pumice I think it adds a, a little bit of a kick to your system if for lack of a better term. I do think it works uh, a bit better than a LECA, and I think that it works better for larger plants because it does have a higher bulk density, which is very, very nice uh, in many cases. But I thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.